Um, okay, you guys, so people are coming in. I want to, first of all, I, I had time today. I put makeup on today and um, I did a few videos. So I'm like, you know what? Let's not let this go to waste. And then on top of that, I did tell you all that I was going to do a video on celibacy. And um, I was going to put it on my YouTube channel. But I was like, you know what? I have something that I'm working on that is, hey, Brianna, that is in that like vein or whatever. So I'm like, I don't want to make a video about that right now but I can always go live and answer the questions because I just don't want to let you guys down you know if I said I'm going to talk about it then I'm going to talk about it so I'm literally answering your questions if you want to ask me an anonymous question little question thingy at the bottom got the little question mark you can submit it and I will answer the questions because I feel like there's so many people who have heard about celibacy um and it seems impossible or you don't know anyone who's doing it or if they are doing it, they ain't doing it for real. And there's just so many layers to it. And when I first decided to be celibate, it was a journey. I didn't just wake up and decide to be pure. God had to really grab me by the arm <laughs> and uh, show me some things. And it took a, a, some trial and error for me to really buckle down and decide to truly do it. Um, and so that's why I I like to talk about it and bring it up because if it wasn't for other women bringing it to me, I would never thought it was even possible for me because honestly, who is doing it? And honestly, why would I want to, right? But through so many different encounters with people, conversations, and then God like aha moments, I finally got to a place and so you know sometimes you just need somebody who's been through it to kind of talk to you and somebody who's been relatable I was not that um virgin uh all my life I <laughs> I had a life <laughs> had a life so um you know that's what I'm all about I'm all about um oh really yeah yes I actually think I do remember that um but yeah, I'm all about making celibacy approachable because sometimes it can feel real stuffy. It can feel real judgy, you know, like you got to be a certain type of woman. Like I'm all for like you guys would be amazed at how many people DM me about celibacy, like because of one video that I did with Justin a year ago. And that video is still like generating conversation and people message me if not on a daily basis they um on a weekly basis about it and i'm answering all of these questions and so obviously there is a need for people to be honest about this and not be like you like they have a perfect life or did it up in a perfect way um i'm i'm thankful that i was able to have somebody do it with me have justin do it with me but that was a process too and um yeah so let me answer some of you guys' questions um before i get into my own story i have a few go ahead charlene so it's a question mark right at the bottom where you guys can submit the question and then i'll take it somebody said what did you put can i pin this question up oh there you go oh this is cute Okay, and I don't know if you guys peep, but I definitely have pajama pants on underneath this uh, lower part. But um, what did you learn about yourself on your journey? <sighs> celibacy was the biggest blessing of my life. Becoming celibate taught me so much about myself. And it's probably the thing that I'm most proud of. Like, I've gotten degrees. I've had so many accomplishments. But I think that, well, I know for sure that becoming celibate was the biggest accomplish of my life, accomplishment of my life because it was literally the opposite of what I grew up knowing, what I seen every single day. It was really the test of who I was as a person and who I wanted to be. And throughout the entire journey, I just learned that I was a leader. I learned that I never compromised myself or my beliefs um i learned my strength i learned um my breaking points i learned my boundaries my limits i learned my worth that's the biggest thing 
um, I learned my worth and that was invaluable. And not only did I learn my worth, but I positioned other people to know my worth. So it was my first time taking a stand about what I wanted and who I was without being afraid of what other people was going to think about me. And that was not easy because it was really uncommon. Like, I swear to you guys, even to the point where my dad, like up until I got married, like, you know, Justin would come over or whatever, um, the house. And sometimes, you know, he would sleep over. And I know that's not like the best way to do it but sometimes he would sleep over because it got too late or whatever the situation was life happens and once again like i'm not your typical uh like christian like by the book like jesus take the wheel type person <laughs> so like my experience was a little bit different i already had a man like we already had sex a lot for years and so it was an adjustment but it was possible right so um so I remember my dad, like I told my dad, like, uh, you don't got to worry, like, we don't have sex. And my dad looked at me like, yeah, okay. Like, nobody, <laughs> nobody believes me, like, for real, for real. Like, people, you tell them that, but they're like, yeah, I, but what, yeah, okay. Life happens, things happen or whatever. So it was just like, for me, no matter if people believe me or not, um, no matter if people understood what I was doing or not, no matter if Justin truly got it or not, I was doing this for me. And I was so proud of that and still am so proud of that. I think that is like the biggest achievement that I have accomplished as a person and as a Christian. And I don't regret it whatsoever. Um, I'm going to go through some of these chat boxes. If you guys have a question, submit it in a little question thingy thing. And if you put it in the comments, I'm going to look for it, um, too. So, okay, so I have a lot. I actually have a, whoa, a lot of questions. So, I'm, I'm going to go with Charlene's question. If you messed up, how do you get back on track of being celibate? Um, you just do it. So, I messed up, for sure. I definitely remember, um, I definitely remember messing up, right? Um, a few times <laughs> I think it was like the there was a year in college where I was like God I see you like I hear you you're here for me like I want to make a change right and I was ready to make that change I thought you know and I fell right back into it like I even remember telling Justin like so excited like I just went to this revival on campus and it's just crazy like I don't even know how I ended up there but it's all God and I was just telling him all these things and he's nodding his head like oh that's so great or whatever and um you know not I, I want to say like a few weeks later I was back to my old self <laughs> So it took some, it took some time. Like it's, it's really didn't happen overnight. And, but I, it was always in my heart to do it. And so like, I was just, I feel like God was just working on me, sending me messengers, sending me people that was bringing it up to me more and more, just building up his love for me and my love for him to the point where it was like, okay, God, I don't want to be fake no more. I don't want to choose anyone over you anymore. I just want to do what I just want to do it for real. I just want to be real. And one of my biggest things that kept me going was that I want to be an example for other people. I really like, I don't know why I volunteered for that, but it was really on my heart. Like, God, I want other women to be able to see that it's possible and you don't have to cut corners or lie to yourself or God or, you know, be fake about it. You can really do this. It's really possible. And I really, really, um, just wanted that and so I just kept growing in it I kept growing in it like God like I just kept going and and as I kept going and 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 talking to God and talking to people about God and it wasn't that I was going to church every single day I was just more conscious it's like once somebody turns the light on you start seeing how messed up stuff is around you and you're just like oh let me clean this up oh, oh I can't believe I was living like that like you start wanting to clean up your messes around you right you start wanting to do better just because it's not that you're a bad person you know we were raised in this world 
So the things that we learned, we learned it. Like, I remember, like, guess it's time for me to lose my virginity. Guess it's time for me to, you know, come into this or to do that. You know, a lot of things I did because I felt like they were rites of passage or things that I should be doing at that age. And so I had to forgive myself, um, you know, and just know that it wasn't my fault. It was nobody's fault, honestly. It just never had been done before. And I think that's why I just really, really wanted to be that one to do it. Not just for myself, but for my sister, for the people around me, like for y'all. Like, like I wouldn't be able to stand in front of you guys honestly now and, and talk about it. Um, we have Jasmine. What? I didn't even know. Wow. Um, and Charlene, I'm here for you. Like accountability is important um if you want someone to be accountable you gotta listen and you have to also um tell on yourself <laughs> um i'm gonna go by who sent it in time um like time wise so well somebody asked me when did i decide to become celibate so I think I was around like 21, 22 when I start making the conscious choice um, to do to become celibate. Um, why did I decide to become celibate? Um, why? I was getting very tired of the things around me and the patterns. I was getting really tired of doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. And then also I was falling in love with God, like in a different way. Like I always knew God and I always knew that he existed. And, you know, I had those good night prayers. And if I'm in a jam prayers, you know, or if I'm drunk prayers, like, God, please just get me out of this. Help me feel better. Like I had those types of prayers. Um, but it was just like he was literally like pulling on me, sending people to talk to me, sending, you know, just different experiences that was just making me more conscious like there's way more to life than what i'm doing there's way more to life than what's happening around me and um i just got to a point where i just started getting closer and closer to god and that was like the last thing that i needed to give up and i was like god i just want to do it 100 percent for you i want to live like this how it was i'm like god i'm not fake so i don't ever want to do anything um that i'm not ready to do and then when I was starting to become ready, I was like, God, I'm going to try this one time. I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to try things your way. I'm going to do it 100% your way because they say your way works, right? I'm going to give you my all in this and we're going to see how it goes. But if this don't go good or, or if this isn't working out, I'm going back to how I was. I'm going back to what like what what I used to do, but I never had to go back because it worked. <laughs> so that's kind of what drew me. Um, I just wanted to be real and authentic, and I just really wanted to try God 100%. Um, another question. I always had an issue with sex, especially when it comes to men. I would like to know how you control your urges. Okay. Huh. See, this is a different because I'm not the most like like sensual person i was before but i think that as i started to really like cleanse my mind and stuff and watch what i was doing it kind of stopped so like i stopped masturbating i stopped watching porn um certain music that i was listening to i stopped listening to certain music just little things that i knew if i was like doing something i'll be like then I knew that I needed to kind of cut those things out of my life. And so that's what I, I started to do. So um, the way that I controlled it was I controlled my environment. I controlled what was around me. I controlled who was around me. Like, it's always awkward a little bit because if you're around your friends, right? And they're talking about what they did or how things happen. Like, sometimes you can bond off of friends. You can bond with friends off of some stuff that you have no business doing so for a lot of my friends like we had conversations about you know the d what happened like how it went like what you know so i had to kind of change those conversations change you know the, what we talked about and um i just had to make a lot of changes so one thing i learned to do too is to um 
learn how to bring people into my world, not me go into their world. So an example of that is um, like at first I was all for like uh, um, just throwing friends away, right? Like, that sounds mean, but I was kind of just like, uh, she don't fit. She don't live her life, blah, blah, blah. But what if somebody would throw me away? What if somebody would have just told, like, the same girls who were ministering to me and telling me about their lifestyle? What if they never, you know, took the time to talk about, talk to me? Because what if they see me? So I had to check myself, and I think God checked me too, and let me know, like, look, girl, like, you're at a point now where you're stronger. Now it's time to for you to pour back into those people is now it's time for you to show back show up back in their lives because you're stronger and there's a way to show up it doesn't mean that you have to go into what they're doing or meet them at the club or meet them here but you can still meet them for lunch you can still meet them here and you can direct the conversation if you don't want to talk about that i'm honest i say i don't even want to talk about that um you know, or I'm, you know, I'm not really like that, but I'm not going to judge what you want to do. And if you're talking to me about something, I'm going to give you my best advice. But at the end of the day, it's going to be God in that advice as well. So I changed the environment. I, I, I kind of changed my relationships. Those ones that I couldn't really like, um, I couldn't really salvage. I let them go. Um, you guys got me hyped because you guys are all talking in the comments and I'm missing it. Um, let me know. Give me some hearts if you guys like this conversation. Um, definitely have to control the environment. Same sis, not easy but worth it. Yeah, that's why I cut off those types of friends. Uh, yes, change those relationships. What you watch, consume is such a big part. Yeah, I really try to stop listening. Oh, let me say this too. Um, one thing too was like when me and Justin would like hang out and stuff, we, um, would change kind of how we hung out right so like i tried to like watch like the times of nights that we hung out and stuff that we did but like i said we had already been dating and it was i can't i can't just negate the fact that um i had a very supportive man in my life who was willing to do it and justin said it in our video on youtube like we did a q a on youtube he said it like when you first said you want to be celibate i was like yeah I like she's gonna change her mind eventually and i'm slide right back in and that makes sense because he said like there were so many people that kept changing their mind and they would say they would want to be one way but they weren't consistent but after he seen my consistency i think it really witnessed to him that like oh she's for real and if i want this i have to be um for real too um how do you let your now husband that you were how do you let your now husband that you were serious how do you stop all of the sexual outside of sex that was impure between you and him like touching and everything okay that's a really good question um how did i stop all the touching and stuff so i'm not gonna lie to you that part was hard and um it was really hard for um my husband because he's a very affectionate person so the type of person i am i'm not that affectionate physically i'm just not and so celibacy might have been easier for me because of that because you know I express my love language I guess is through actions and through like gifts and like I like to give to a person I like to be there for them but as far as touching and stuff like that I'm not that person so it wasn't that hard for me and my uh, my husband when we were being celibate you know and dating he was like criticizing me for being kind of like robotic and I think I was robotic I turned myself off completely like I tried not to let my mind go there I didn't let myself get there but there were moments though where you know that it was like the days Justin like the times all the times he tried me I'm like eh, no I say good day you know I'm like you know dodging like eh, eh. and after a while they stopped but there had there were a few times where I was like did he look over here like I swear like, it's, like so there was times but the best thing that I could do is for one I had to stop myself and also Justin has stopped me 
um, you know, as well. So it wasn't always easy, but I tried my hardest to just remember my why. And I think that's so important, having a why on why you're doing it. And that why led me to so much, like the why of me doing it. And it was more than just me. Like I made it more about more than myself. I'm like, God, I don't know why you're asking me to do this, but it got to be more than just about me. And so much, so much has come from that. Like, hold on. It was like, I never realized how much baggage that I carried from one relationship to another, to another, to another. I never questioned why I wanted a man or why I needed a man or what even a man meant to me in my life. I never questioned who I was and where I was going, what I believed in and what I wanted. And celibacy gave me a, a chance to sit back from the distractions like sex is a distraction if it's not put in its right place it distracts you i've i've wasted so many hours and time thinking about dudes and you know at the end of it when i look back i want to throw up because the nigga wasn't for me like i'm just being honest and i wasted time and i just think about that and and i could have done so much with that time and so that really helped me to um to be sober um um how do you for how do people make sex be a big part um that's a good question do you think it was easier to abstain because you already had sex before see now that's a good question and i'm not really sure because i think it was easier to look forward to the finish line because I, I'm just being honest, I think that it's so like I've already been there, I've already experienced that. It, you know, I've already experienced it. So you know, I knew what I was signing up for. I already got to test drive. You know, just trying to keep it PG, and so I knew what I was looking forward to at the end of the day. I always think about it. Like if I was dating a guy that I'd never been with. I think it definitely would have been harder, but it's still doable. Um, my pastors talk about this and they say like, look, the thing is, um, hey, Justin, the food's still on the stove. Um, but the thing is, um, they were saying like, if we, if, if we all lived in the world that God intended us to, we wouldn't know whose penis was big, whose was small, who had the best like, you know, stroke. We wouldn't know any of that because we would only be with this one person. And so I would like to think, like, if you think about it like that, if God has made this person for you, when you guys are together, it's going to be amazing. But I do think that it was a, just a little bit easier because I did know, like I said, I did know. Um, but it doesn't make it not doable. And um, I think that, you know, it's already not an easy process, but I think um, it's doable. Uh, but I think, yeah, it was probably a little easier. Did I fast before choosing to be celibate? No, I didn't even think I really knew about fasting like that, honestly. Um, <laughs> Justin is in the kitchen making comments. I'm going, Psh, came home one day, just decided. But no, it wasn't a, it wasn't an overnight decision. As much as it may have seemed overnight to him, I told him a few times and mentioned it but like I said he didn't take me seriously because I've st I said it before once or twice and you know he was just like yeah okay but um I did not fast before but I had many conversations where with God where it was brought up or many times like there were just certain things that were happening with me that I don't really want to get too personal with but there were certain things that was happening to me like within my body um, there were certain things that was happening to me around me in my world that were just signs to me that like I need to let this go. And I feel like God was kind of like putting it and pressing it to me like, look, this is the way for you. And I felt like I was just there. Like I was really close to the intimacy that I was looking for with God. But it was this one thing I was still holding on to. And he was just like, let it go. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to try it. It better be worth it. <laughs> like, um, that's a good question. Do you still believe like you would be with your then boyfriend if he didn't want to be celibate as well? And so that is a really good question because I get a lot of girls 
who DM me and say, look, I really want to be celibate. I have a boyfriend right now. I don't know what to do. What if he doesn't? I'm scared to tell him. And girl, I was scared too. And it wasn't that I didn't think that Justin loved me. It was just so abnormal to do something like this. And then in the middle of a relationship, it's like, what? Why? It's like you're switching up. And there's a level of fear that comes up because it's like, what if I decide to do this and this person cheats on me this person leaves me i've invested a lot into this relationship i love this person but what if and it seems crazy because it's like okay common sense outside looking in you will be like okay well if you don't want to do it he ain't the one for you and it's so easy to say that and trust me i know it's easy to say it but it's another thing to let go because you got to understand that not everybody is in this mind and in this relationship with God where just everything makes so much sense. Not everybody's able to trust and to see the future and to see the end of what their choice is. So it was not that easy for me to be like, Ugh. I remember having like in my journals, I have conversations where I'm like, God, I want to tell him that I want to be celibate, but I'm afraid. And it took me a lot of conversations and prayer even to myself. And I finally got to the place where I was like fired up. And let me make this clear. I got my strength because I was continually going to church. I had found a church that was teaching me this. It wasn't um, specifically teaching me on celibacy, but it would. But the pastor, my pastor now, would be mentioning it like a little bit here and there, and it would just always resonate with me. And so I got to the point where it was like, you know what? I'm choosing God all the way, 100%. Like, I'm not no punk, you know, for anything else. So why would I be a punk for a God? Like, if this person isn't for me, then he's not going to be for me. I got to get up the courage. At the end of the day, this is my life. So I'd rather the person show me their true colors right now so i can save myself more time being wasted position myself on who i want to be and do that thing and so like for a long time i pretended in relationships and i had i had made a video about this on my igtv um and on my youtube um i think it was about like what i learned being single or something like that but for a long time, I pretended I did catfishes in my relationships. I pretended to be everything that the person wanted. I pretended to go along with everything that they liked. I remember being the girl. I would start listening to the music he would listen to. I would start, you know, just kind of conforming and doing the things that he wanted to. And I would be real, real good, a real, real good girlfriend. And then after I got things, you know, locked in, then I would start saying little things about what I wanted, little things, but always being just careful enough that I don't say too much so that I lose him, but just give a little bit. And I realized that's no way to live. And that's why so many women are so disappointed because they're being cunning in what they want instead of being themselves in the beginning. And so this was my first time being myself 100% and saying exactly what I wanted. And it was so scary, you guys, because I did not know what was the outcome. I didn't know, but I got to the point where I was like, at the end of the day, if I choose God, I can't lose. At the end of the day, if I choose God, like, look, he got better for me. And that does, that does not take away from the amazing boyfriend that Justin was to me at the time. It's just that I wanted God's will for my life because God has a will for us and a plan for us but he also gives us free will to choose and so it was me god putting me in position hey do you want me to choose um you know do you want to choose or you want to go with what i got and i decided to choose what god had for me um let me keep reading this these comments uh um Not sure if you answered this, but did you guys spend time alone with each other, like chill at each other's home? So, you guys, I definitely, I'm just going to be honest. And just because I did it this way doesn't mean that that's the way that it should be done. I'm just being honest. For me, I did chill at Justin's house. He had his own house and he had a roommate, which kind of helped because at least there was somebody there. And I always kept in the back of my mind, like, I have to stick to this because I don't want one witness to be able to say, Excuse me. I don't want one witness to be able to say, 
they was in there doing it and they wasn't doing what they were supposed to so i was very conscious about my witness and i just didn't want to live a lie i just wanted if i'm gonna do this let me be real so it helped that justin had a roommate but sometimes i did sleep over i remember one time we had went um on vacation to visit his people in chicago and my pastor called me like hope y'all not sleeping in the bed together and i was like <laughs> literally <laughs> in the bed with him like and so like me and justin we were like look god we gave up everything like can we at least like smack the cover down make a line and at least be like side by side so that was that was my compromise i'm not gonna lie sometimes i did sleep over and you know i did have a boundary um, i mean i had boundaries but i did tote that line and i know there's some people who are celibate like i never kissed until the day i got married and I think that's great for you. If that works for you, if you you know yourself, you know your body. If you can't lay in the bed with somebody without getting, you know, ideas, then it's not for you. I was the stronghold, the strong arm in my relationship. Like, nope, uh-uh. It was like, at that point, it was my battery. But I was the one that was like very assertive and so I kind of controlled the situation, but that was dangerous. It was like playing with fire. So look, I don't recommend it, but I'm just telling you guys what I did. Um, what was my, what was my husband's reaction to it? Um, my husband's reaction, like I told you guys, when I initially came to him, he was like, he's told, I didn't know this at the time. After we talked about it in retrospect, he was like, look. Um, when you told me that, I was like, yeah, she said it before and we'll see how it happens. I don't think it's going to happen and she's going to stick to it, but we'll see. And, um, he told me about other girls that said the same thing. And it was like, you know, I feel like we, as women, we don't know what guys deal with and the other type of women that they deal with. So I'm sure there was women that were virgins. There were women that were waiting or being celibate or were churchy and did whatever. And that's why I think it's so important. Like, not you guys, like, one thing that I learned from celibacy, don't look at a man as just your accessory or the person that is going to love you. Look at a man as a soul, as God's child. He's watching you. And you're ministering to him with your lifestyle, whether you like it or not. So if you're dating a guy who may not be as spiritual as you, and you're talking about God all day long, but then when it comes down to it, you still blessing it, then you're giving him an impression of what a Christian is. And you got to deal with that. You got to answer to God for that. So he's not in the wrong because he's being himself. You're in the wrong because you're trying to be one person by day and another person by night. And that ain't it. That's not right. And so for me, I was always like, God says, if you're lukewarm, I'd rather you be for me or against me. I'd rather you be hot or cold. If you're in the middle, I'm going to spit you out. And that's the, um, the same way with me. Like when I think about the people that I want in my life, the friends that I want, I'm always like, look, boo, either you like me or you don't. If you're in the middle, you can kick them. And I feel like God is the same way. And so when we're when we're saying all these things and going to these Bible studies and taking pictures of us at church on Sunday, there's people truly watching us and seeing if we really are who we say we are. And that's including the guys that are in your phone, the guys who are in your DMs. They're looking to see if there's actually that one. And that's why so many guys don't have hope. And I'm not I'm not putting it all on us. But I'm just saying, if all you can do is take accountability for yourself, right? And so, in order to show somebody something different, you got to be different. And you don't want to be contrary to what you're saying. Um, so, my point is that um, I kept that in the back of my head. So, even though Justin didn't really believe me or whatever, I still looked at him as a soul too. Like, this is an opportunity for me to minister to him too. Like, I want to see him saved. I want to, I mean, he's been saved, but I want to see him living, 
you know, in all of these blessings that God has promised us. And I want our family to be blessed. Like when I get married and, you know, I'm finished with this test, I want it to be so blessed because we did things right. I want to be able, even though I didn't start off right, I want to be able to minister to my baby girl and tell her what I did. And it's her choice to choose. All I can give her is options. I'm not going to make her be a nun or, you know, be, a, she got choices is all I'm saying. But I want to be able to present her with my life and her to see my life and say y'all i don't know i'm getting teary-eyed i want to be able to look at my life and see that it is possible um and i think about that for my little sister too um let me see i think i kind of answered a lot of these questions they should like take them off once you answer them how do you um how do you maintain celibacy that's a good question um how do you maintain celibacy i think that the best way to be celibate and to maintain it is to continuously put yourself in positions where it's doable continue to feed yourself the word if you're not as disciplined to sit there and read the bible yourself every night and i wasn't that disciplined either but i kept myself in the environment so i kept going to church i kept like you know listening to the word of god i kept my ears open and my eyes open to see god and i kept trying even when i messed up or even when it was challenging um and i stuck to my word and um, the biggest way to maintain it for me is to look at God not as an object or this foreign, you know, ruler of the universe, but to look at him as the one who loves you and has plans for you and has created you and has all these great, amazing things for you. And not just thinking about the things, but just think about like, I remember one time you guys, like I told you, I had a lot of God moments that led me up into the situation. I remember one time I was praying and it was like, I was a prayer of repentance. And I think this was before I decided to be fully celibate. And I started like, I, I heard in the message like one night that like God is with us everywhere. And I just thought about that. It really like stuck with me. Like God is with me everywhere. He was with me in these like terrible situations that I was in. He was with me when I was sitting there chasing after somebody when I was having sex. He he knew like Jesus was there like he knew. And it just made me cry because he knew he knew who I was like he knew the choices that I made and he was still pulling on me to be who he wanted me to be and to me that was love you know um your parents love you the people in your life love you but not everybody can see what God sees in you and I don't I always wonder sometimes like God why me you know, when I look at my family, sometimes my family puts me on a pedestal. But if they only knew the things that I deal with are very similar to what they deal with. But I feel like God chose me to help my family and to help other people for whatever reason. You know, when I look at myself, the things that I go through on a daily basis, the things that I think, you know, the generational curses I've had to fight to break. It makes me cry. It makes me just overwhelmed because I don't deserve it and he was there with me and every bad decision that I made and he still loved me and just because you made bad decisions doesn't make you a bad person just because you made bad decisions or bad choices maybe you just didn't know and like once you get like that's why I'm saying celibacy was such a healing for me because I was able to forgive myself Every piece of myself that I gave away, I could never get it back. And it wasn't that I was a hoe where I was out here, but even the, the, the few people that I gave it to, I can't give it, I can't get it back. I can't. And so I had to mourn what I gave. I had to mourn what I gave to them and I, and I couldn't get it back. And so I had to go through so much healing and deliverance, you know, like I went through, I've been through. If you guys only knew some of the things that I have been through that maybe in another time I would talk to you about, you know, like, so I had to mourn all of those things. And I think as women, 
we're survivors and we get up and we think that it's it's just a part of dating and a part of life to be excuse my language to be shitted on to be taken advantage of like we feel like that's a part of it that's a part of being a woman that's you know I'm sorry, y'all, all my church people, but it's a part of knowing, like, niggas ain't shit, and they not gonna, you know, be like this, and we learn that, and we keep going, but we don't really look at what it's done to us, and I think that's what really brought me to celibacy, is that I didn't like who I became after, after talking to these dudes, after, I didn't under, I, I, I didn't understand what I was doing, I didn't understand the power that I was giving other people over my life and I was done and I was tired and I was ready to be renewed and restored and rebuilt. I was ready to see what I can do if God is with me. I was ready to give it 100% because I gave everything and everybody else my all and I was ready to see what God could do with me if I just say yes. So, man, like, people look at celibacy as a punishment they look at it as you know a chastity bell you locked up right like it's just chained up like <laughs> they look at it like you're gonna wear like granny panties and never feel sexy or you know and I looked at it like that a little bit but I had to get out of that and so it's not a punishment what it is is a self-discipline to love yourself enough to be to be um selective of who you invite into your life who you invite and and also soul ties come from emotions as well because you can be on the phone with somebody telling somebody your most intimate details and that can be more intimate than having sex with them that's another form of intimacy that god is jealous he's like look you've been on the phone with a boy for two hours you be looking at him you be talking to him you're spending all that time with him and i got things to tell you i got stuff to do and things that i need you to do but you're distracted and so that's another form you know of intimacy that you got to be careful of as well so it's just so many um ways but it will be revealed to you it's not that deep it's not that hard it's just a no and i think that women have such a hard time saying no sometimes to the men in our lives because we're taught to say yes we're taught to show up in certain ways it's a norm to be like this but what I love about Christianity is that it's literally you doing the opposite of what everybody else is doing and proving pe to people that there's another way to live life. And yeah, you guys really got me on here like ministering and crying and I had put lashes on. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, everything is about, I love that word self-discipline. Self-discipline is it's what it is. And look, let me share this before my time run out on here. Um, one thing my pastor told me, he was like, it, both of them, my pastor and his wife, they're both pastors. Um, but I'll tell you what my apostle said first, the man. So he told me that men watch women, right? They're watching you to see what you do. And if you say that you love God and that you love him in all these ways, but then you're able to betray your promises, to betray your lifestyle in Christ, to do whatever you're doing with this man he's taking note of that and he's noting that you're not trustworthy if if you can't be trusted to love and honor and obey god and keep your vows to god why would you keep it to him that's one thing that really stuck in my mind second thing that my pastor um said his wife we were having like a, a conversation for something and uh like they teach us so much but anyway she was telling me that um if you've never abstained from something, then when you get into marriage, it's going to be very hard for you to stay faithful. And so there's times in marriages where you just get busy. You're not able to just be like rabbits. You're not able to do all these things like you got responsibilities, you got bills. I don't have kids yet, but I can imagine when children get in the mix, it gets crazy. Who are you and who is your husband when you guys are denying each other sex? 
Are you guys going to cheat? Are you guys going to, you know, stray in other ways? And so celibacy teaches you that discipline. It teaches you that discipline to teach yourself how to go without. And when you go without, when you get in times where you're not able to, it's, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's not a make or break. It's not a driver. And sex can really drive you. You know, a lot of people use sex for comfort. A lot of people use sex for control. There's so many reasons. Sex is a driver. And you have to be really conscious on what sex is driving you and what is this sex doing for you and giving you that you can't get from God. And why are you why are you needing it? And what what emptiness and need is inside of you that you really need to look at, confront, and fix because that's only a moment and once that moment is done you're still the person that is in need and so oh y'all y'all really got me talking look this is god talking this is not me but um yeah i love that dominique you said it's protection it is protection because it will show you too like i was in the um the blessed position that i already kind of knew that justin was my husband i was pretty sure but I can imagine that if you're dating, right, like, and I'm one of these people, I don't, if I was dating, I always thought about this. Like, I wouldn't just be like, as soon as someone gives me their number, we talk on the phone first few times. I'm like, yeah, I'm celibate. I wouldn't reveal that. I would just date the person, talk to the person. And when I feel comfortable enough, I'm going to tell the person. I'm not going to tell somebody that I first meet my sexual history and all of that. So why would I reveal that to them? So I would take my time with it. Um, and learn even if this person is right for me but celibacy as soon as you drop that note it shows you who the person is and why they're with you because one thing is when you tell somebody no it shows you who they really are because if you think about it like think about all the times where you like what's that Beyonce song first time I said no it's like I never said yes right I always think about that song like you can say yes to somebody but as soon as you say no it shows you who they are if they're using you um, you know, it shows you their temperament, that no, that hard, firm no will show you if the person is really for you. So it is a protector. Um, do you believe cel celibacy can help remove soul ties or cords? I don't think that celibacy actually removes it, but I do think that prayer, fasting, and deliverance is what frees you from it. I think celibacy is kind of like the first step to kind of showing you and giving you clarity about what you need to get delivered from and showing you where the soul ties are. And um, and then through prayer, through like fasting, through deliverance, then you're like starting to be removed from those soul ties. And soul ties last a long time. And um, sometimes it takes more than just a few times to get rid of it. I always can, like, you can always tell if you have a soul tie with a friend, with a person, whoever, is if when that person comes in the room, if they change, like, you, they change how you feel, how you're acting, your mood, you can still see it, like, if that person comes up on your timeline or in your life in any way, it will show you, you know, if anything is, is still there. Um... Oh, y'all are having conversations in here. I guess that's where I messed up. I told the guy two seconds of having his number. And it's not even a messed up, you guys. Like, you're learning. And this is not, like, anything easy. I think I have about, like, 10 minutes uh, left on here before this cuts off. Um, has celibacy allowed you to become more closer to God? Yes, that's, that's a given. So much closer, you guys. Like, and it's not that, um, like... It was just, it allowed me to be more sensitive because the thing is, God is always there, but we dull our senses. It's like when you smoke, right? I used to um, smoke, but like when you smoke or when you drink, it's like you're dulling your senses, the things around you. So it's hard to be as alert. And that's the same thing with, um, with like, I feel like when you start really sobering up in God, it's like um, it it, it kind of like allow, allowed you to hear him more. So when you're like telling yourself no in other areas, you're telling God yes. So you're able to hear him more. You're able to see him more. And that celibacy is really just the first step, like you know, to you know your journey. Like it's just one of the many things to do 
but it really helps you to be more focused. And, you know, if you're on here and you're just, you know, you're praying and hoping that one day you find a husband and, you know, just praying like for your relationships and stuff, um, I really would like challenge you to just even consider and look into what celibacy is for you and what it means to you and your why. And I, I hope that this kind of planted a seed in you to think about it and to look at it as possible. Like, I'm so thankful to God that not only did he push me to do it, but then he gave me a reward for it. Like, my husband is a bomb. He's amazing. He's awesome. And I always, we always say, like, I know that we would have a marriage, but it wouldn't be what it is now. The way that celibacy has positioned us, like the way that God is in the center of us, like we cannot lose. We cannot lose. Even when we, it looks like we're losing, we're not because God is in the center of us and we have each other. And like that foundation is literally priceless. You know, the work that I put into it has not, has nothing in comparison to the reward you know, Mo is on here. She did my makeup that day um, on my wedding day. She's seen how God blessed that moment. Like everything was just so beautiful and it was so blessed. Um, and I was just so thankful because it was like, it was worth it. It was worth it. Anytime you choose God, it is so worth it, you guys. Um, so yeah, I just want to encourage you um, to try it. I'm going to let this live... Um, stay up uh so that you guys can watch it again or you know share it with your people but man like if you're thinking about it if it's even in the back of your mind just give it a try and it's not about being perfect it's not about doing it like a certain way it's about taking the steps like i'm just trying to get my words out as fast as possible because the time is coming up but there's so much going on in our lives. Like, our generation is the one that's dealing with, like, we always say, like, the generational curses. We've learned about this. We've, we're we woke, right? We know all these things. But there's one thing to have all the knowledge in the world. But it's another thing to have wisdom, to have guidance, and have direction. And so that's always my prayer. Like, I was always a smart girl. I always knew a lot. But my intelligence didn't get me anywhere. Like, it didn't get me any further than the next person it helped but it didn't make me whole you know being cute it had its perks but it didn't make me whole you know being funny or you know personable got me where I needed to go but it didn't make me whole so my point is that nothing can make you whole except for God and so it's always worth pressing in and what I love about God is that he never like chalk me up or throw me away he always was there like what's up baby girl like i see you crying i'm here what do you need like just let say the word say the word and i can make this all stop say the word and i got you like i've been waiting and so it's never that you're waiting on god god is always waiting on you he's always been there and he's just waiting for you to take a step forward and the step doesn't always have to be the biggest one i think i was in a place where i was trying to get so perfect first like oh let me clean this up once i stop doing this i'm gonna get a little bit older a little bit more mature then i'm gonna be like real in church and saved and stuff and i kept waiting for the right time and the right moment to be right and there's never a right time i can never be clean enough to be worthy enough of god all I can do is show up and give him a yes, give him my best. Like, that's all I can do. All I can do. Um, yep. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, yep. So I just, let me say a prayer for everybody. So God, I just pray for everybody on this line. Obviously, they have stuck in and watched this live for a reason, God. If there's even just like a little bit, Lord, of desire, Lord, in them, God, to really truly be saved, God, and to live for you, God, 100% to be celibate, God. I just pray that you, God, continue to water that seed in their lives, God. Open up their mind, God. Send them people. Send them relationships. Send them, God, the right encouragement, God. Send them the right pastor. Send them the right people in their lives, God, to allow them to come into it. Do actually, God, I pray that, but I also pray that you do for them what you did for me. 
show up in their lives the way that you showed up in my life, God. And if you want it, God, do it even better. Do it even greater. Do it even more. Let your will be done in their lives, God, and let them see your possibilities, Lord. I really pray that for them, God. I just pray for peace and strength, God. I pray, Lord, that they know who they are and their identity in you, that they continue to learn from you and grow in you, God, and become exactly who you've called them to be, Lord. I just come against distractions. I come against, Lord, the enemy in their lives that would try to take them off course. And I just pray that your will be done in each and every one of their lives, God. I thank you, Lord, for my testimony, God. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak to your daughters, God, to your sons even. And I, we just thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, this was good. Y'all really blessed me. <laughs> So uh, hit me up in my DMs if you have any more questions. I love you guys and I will catch you guys later.